Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped, and welcome to a bit of a different format of video. I'm just trying something out here. If it works, great, I might do more. If it doesn't, please tell me and I won't bother. But behind me is the Audi SQ8. I've been driving that car for the last week. I've done well over a thousand miles in it. But there's something on that car that has kind of sparked something in me and I need to get this off my chest. The outside two tips on that quad exit exhaust are both fake. And I have a real problem with manufacturers, not just Audi, a whole range of manufacturers do this, putting fake exhausts on the car. And then I have another story I need to talk to you about, which honestly you won't believe, but I think this video is gonna be exhausting. See what I did there? Anyway, stay tuned. This vlog should be quite interesting. Roll the titles. So this will be rough and ready. I want to have a conversation about the exhaust, not just on the Audi, but actually there's lots and lots of cars nowadays that have either fake exhaust tips or augmented exhaust sound. And I just want us to have a discussion about that. And then we're gonna actually go out for a bit of a drive because there's something else I've been reading about and somebody else reached out to me. One of my subscribers, a good friend of mine, uh, has reached out to me and told me a story that I honestly didn't believe. And I've had a bit of a read into it and, I think it's something that you guys might be interested in, certainly need to be aware of, but again, a little bit of a discussion. So a bit of a vlog format, but let's just have a quick look around the SQ8. Um, it has been a superb car uh, for me so far this week. As you can see, it has lots and lots of Ming on it. Now, the interesting thing about being a YouTuber is if you ever review a car and it's not clean, the amount of grief you get is just unbelievable. But yeah, um, very impressive. Now, one of the things to point out, actually, um, these are the sensors just here and just here for the adaptive cruise and autonomous driving that this car has. And th also things like the, uh, the LED matrix LED headlamps. And they're so dirty, that actually last night, one of those features stopped working because the car was so dirty. It's probably actually, if I do that, look. Yeah, it's, it's disgusting. So yeah, very, very impressive car. I've enjoyed it a great deal. Um, it's impressed me a great deal. However, it has something on it that I, I just start to see quite commonly being done by manufacturers and it just winds me up. Now, first thing to be said, at least it's got what look like two proper exhausts, but on closer inspection, and I don't know whether this will come across on camera. Oh yeah, you might just get that, look. That is a completely fake tip. This one actually has an exhaust inside it. So although the rear of this car has, quad exhaust actually only the inner two exhausts do anything the other one are there purely for aesthetics now i don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with that but i also really don't understand the justification for it now i guess if i just spin around this way uh, one of the things um if now, it was a few years ago now when I reviewed the SQ5, and the SQ5 is actually arguably even worse than this. It sounds amazing. It's got a brilliant exhaust tone, but actually here, instead of exhaust, you've basically got uh, like a plastic um, trim, really, and then the exhaust points out and goes down underneath the car. And that's, for me, that is sufficient a problem for me to have with that car that would mean I wouldn't buy it. And and it's not just Audi, and I'm not Audi bashing here, and I would love to know what you think. Um, but certainly over the last, I don't know, three, four years, five years maybe, we've started to see more and more cars come to market that may not sound as good as they could do, so their sound is either augmented, this has uh, noise augmentation in the exhaust pipes, and that might be done externally, or it might be pumped through the speakers inside the car or we start to have kind of cosmetic fake tips like that. Now, I am a big fan of, of having an exhaust on the back of the car that looks nice. I think it's part of the overall aesthetics of a car. I think it's, for me, it's a really important thing. And I just don't understand the justification for not just putting a proper exhaust on there. You look at the new diesel S4, has exactly the same thing. They're completely fake tips. 
what do, what do you guys think? Am I am I on a kind of lone crusade here? Am I waffling on and and sort of you know, if I if I think about my car here, so that the S4 there, it's got a proper exhaust on it. Clearly the Ruby Roadster over there definitely has. It's got a crap of its downpipe and a proper box, and it sounds great, and it's got that kind of meaty meaty exhaust sound. And I know with all of the kind of filters that we have to put on cars these days to hit emissions targets and all of the regulations around uh, emissions. And then it's a real challenge for manufacturers. Gone are the days, sadly, for me, I think it's sadly anyway, where the kind of crackles and pops are less and less. Those used to be, they're fake. I know, everyone knows they're fake. It's in the map. We just drop a little bit of spent fuel in a warm exhaust and it pops when it comes out the back of the car. But it added to the theatre and the drama. So I kind of understand why that started to disappear. I get it and I'll accept it. What I can't accept is... I think things like that, I think that is lazy car design. I think it should be, if, if, if you can't justify having proper exhaust on the back, don't put them on. You know, just have two exhausts on the back of there. And I know it's an S car trait. All S cars, Audi S cars, anyway, for the last, since I can remember, have always had quad exit exhausts. And the RS models have had the oval exhaust. But even if you look at those, there's an oval exhaust pipe, but inside are two little exhausts. And it's not just Audi that do this. There's a, a range of different manufacturers. Be it, uh, Mercedes have, have the same problem on the back of theirs. They have these awful kind of plastic trims that are put on the back to look like an exhaust but really don't do a very good job of it. So that is my first rant in this vlog, is why oh why don't manufacturers just put proper exhausts on the back of a car? And if, if it's a cost justification, then, then, then fine, just don't, don't bother putting fake exhausts. It just look rubbish. When you follow this car behind, all you see on the two right-hand ones is a blanking panel. And if the sun catches it right, if the light's in the right condition, I just think that looks terrible. Um, and you might look at it and think, oh, there's maybe a valve in the exhaust that opens up under certain sport modes or on heavy throttle, but on that car, it's not. Um, so don't get me wrong, that, I, I still think the car's amazing and I've, I've put a, a good review together, but for me, that is a trait we're seeing with lots of car manufacturers that I really, really have a problem with. Anyway, let me jump in the car. We'll go for a bit of a, a drive because the next thing I want to talk about, I'd kind of heard of a little bit, but one of uh, my subscribers, the guy now, if you've seen the uh, little classic, orange classic mini that I reviewed probably two years ago now, it's the second most viewed film on the channel. It's got well over a quarter of a million views. Mark, the owner, um, contacted me a couple of weeks ago with a story and honestly, I didn't believe it to start with. So let's jump in the car and I shall tell you more. Now, I know we've just been moaning about exhausts, but for a diesel, this thing sounds brilliant. And I don't mind augmented exhaust noise if it sounds brilliant. I don't mind, I'm not, a, a, you know, I don't have a major problem. I know lots of people do have a big problem with that, but personally, I don't. I, um, if it sounds good, it's pleasing to my ear holes, that's all good. And I gotta say, this car is biblically quick. Now, the thing I wanted to talk to you about, so Mark, this friend of mine, rang me up and we were talking about something else. And he said, I need to tell you a story about what happened to my mum the other week. And I'm like, oh really? Anyway, his mum looks out the front window of her house to see some oik under the back of her car. And the car is up on a, um, a trolley jack. And by the time she realizes what's happened, this oik had removed the catalytic converter from her car and made off with it. He basically jacked the back of the car up, got an angle grinder out, cut the catalytic converter off the back of the car and made good his escape. And obviously that then means you need to have a completely new catalytic converter put on the car. I was like, wow, how long did that take? All of that was done in less than three minutes. So we then start to have a bit of a look at the problem and it is a really, really big problem. So in the first six months of 2019, there were just short of 3,000 thefts of catalytic converters. And if you compare that with the same period the year before, it's double the number. 
So it's a really, really big problem. Um, and the amazing thing for me is the speed at which these people can remove a catalytic converter. But it's also interesting what cars they're targeting. So the number one car or type of car that they like, these oiks, and I'm gonna call them oiks, um, are hybrid cars. So things like uh, Pro, uh, Toyota Prius is their number one favorite target. And the reason that they like hybrid cars is because the catalytic converter, because it's a hybrid, isn't, if you like, being used all the time because the car will run in a EV mode or um, in low emissions mode quite a lot. So the precious minerals that are inside the catalytic converter don't get dirtied and used as much, so they're in better condition so you can basically get more money for the catalytic converter. And the really scary thing is the scrap value or the price of these um, precious minerals that are inside your catalytic converter, you can make quite good money. So the first material in a catalytic converter is palladium. And palladium currently is going for about 1,300 pounds an ounce. And rhodium, the other precious mineral found in catalytic converters is about 1,400 pounds an ounce. So, you know, the, the theory is you get rid of a, or nick a catalytic converter, uh, sell it. Now, this is the bit I wanna come on to. It's the selling bit and the, the scrap metal buyers that this is the big challenge. So how do you stop the problem? Well, um, I guess the first problem is if you cut off the source of the money, i.e it's illegal to buy uh, a stolen catalytic converter, then why bother nicking it in the first place? We've seen this in lots of things. I remember remember the days when we used to have stereos stolen out of cars all the time. I, I bet, you know, put in the comments below how many of you ever had a stereo nicked from the car? I certainly did. But how many of you had a stereo nicked from the car in the last 15 years? Probably very, very few. Because we made it so difficult for them to be stolen that it, it just ended up not being the case. So the police are certainly cracking down on the scrap metal market and you need to have you know, if you rock up to a scrap metal merchant um, with a stolen catalytic converter and you can't prove rightful ownership or the fact that you've got some justification for having the car, then technically they are breaking the law by by, or by giving you money from it. But you know what happens, it's, there's gonna be a cash market, someone's making a quick buck from it. And it, it's just really, really uh, not good. Um, and then the second thing you could do is to basically try and make it so that the catalytic converter is more difficult to steal. So the challenge is in older cars, um, the catalytic converter is at the back end of the exhaust pipe and you just go underneath the car at the back with an angle grinder and you can basically cut that off and, and off you go. So I guess the question is how, how do you um, make it more difficult to steal? I mean the first thing, there are a few manufacturers that have placed the catalytic converter in a different part of the car, maybe actually underneath the bonnet. Um, so that you, in order to get to get it off the car, you either need to go into the bonnet by opening the bonnet, or you need to remove other engine components to get access to it. I know it's a pain if you actually had a valid reason for needing to change the catalytic converter. And there are some manufacturers that basically put some kind of cover plate um, uh, over the catalytic converter just to make it more timely. You've got to you've got to take your time to get it off, because where these thieves kind of do well is. Um, how fast they can literally jack a car up in the middle of the night and before you know, you'll hear the noise, by the time you're outside the house, your cat's gone. Um, and then I guess there's things like making sure the car is parked in a, you know, uh, with CCTV or in a garage or something along those lines. I'd love to know if any of you have had this happen to you. It, you know, it's one of those things I didn't even, I'd heard that catalytic converters were kind of, um, because of the precious minerals were, uh, on the second hand market anyway you know you could get good money for them and, and those types of things but I just had no idea that people were so brazen that they'd literally just jack the car up and cut the exhaust off the back again I guess it reminds me when I was a younger driver and, and you know it was a relative 
maybe it was because I lived in Hatfield at the time actually, but a relatively regular occurrence. You'd, you know, I remember coming out of the cinema in Hatfield when I was at university and quite regularly seeing cars up on bricks because someone had nicked the wheels. Um, and now we've all got kind of locking wheel nuts and we've made it more difficult. So it's not like these things can't be fixed. It's not like we can't come with a solution, but um, all I need to, the reason I thought I'd put this video together is if you happen to drive a hybrid vehicle, especially a Toyota Prius by the sounds of it, uh, then you really need to be very, very careful. Um, and you need to be aware that this is a problem. So I don't know what you think of this kind of, I don't know, little sort of chat vlog format when I kind of, to get things off my chest every now and again, if I have a spare, especially for my Monday night videos. I think Monday night videos for me, they're always a little bit, you know, my, my main film of the week, main video of the week is always Friday. I've always, I always save up the good car or the review or the best film for a Friday. Midweek 180 is just a conversation with my regular hardcore followers, my peddlers. And I love that very much, just bringing you up to date with the latest in F1 and, and news about the videos I've been making and so on. And I thought there might be scope every now and again on a Monday just to do one of these videos, just to do a bit of a vlog, you know, talk about a particular subject area. So if there are any subjects that you want me to kind of give you my opinion on, um, and because the other one of the other things that I get quite a lot, especially with car reviews, is oh, you'd never say anything bad about a car, you'd never be negative about a car because the you're in the you know the basically under the paymaster of the of the brands you work with, which is simply just not the case at all. Um, and I hope this kind of proves it a little bit. I really, really don't like this whole fake exhaust thing. I think it's I think it just it just it's lazy, or you're letting the money men win. Um, anyway, it's a short one this. Um, I just thought I'd uh, uh, put that out there. Uh, make sure you uh, let me know what you think about the catalytic converter there. But most importantly, what do you think about exhausts generally? Um, and I know the other thing I should mention, by the way, is if you're not happy with an exhaust, you can always put an aftermarket exhaust on. And I know many of you have done that. I've done that on my Mini. Um, and I always, whenever I buy a new car, I think I'm gonna put a new exhaust on that. And I know there are many YouTubers who basically make a living out of YouTube ad revenue from, oh, I've put a new exhaust on my car. But there are, you know, probably 80, 90% of drivers would never even consider putting an aftermarket exhaust on. Why should they? Um, why can't it just look good and sound good from factory? I, and I honestly don't see why it can't. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. Let me know if you like the format. Let me know if you've got any ideas for me to give you my opinion on. I don't know, maybe we could even think of a name for this. This, this particular one's maybe called the Exhausting Vlog. But I'll see you on the next film, guys. Uh, don't forget, follow me on Instagram. Um, but if you like this one, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrobin for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. But you take care. Drive safe.